No fake, no way. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for coming here today. I'm Nancy Barr. I'm legislator for District 6, which includes Harrison, Port Chester, and Rybrook. And I'm very proud to be here today to introduce this incredibly important legislation. I'd like to thank all my colleagues who are here today, the board chairman, Mr. Ben Boykin, my legislative co-sponsor, Chris Johnson, as well as the other co-sponsors of uh, today's uh, bill, and that includes legislator, uh, legislator Catherine Borgia and legislator Mary Jane Shimsky, who's behind me, legislator Catherine Parker, legislator Alfreda Williams, legislator uh, Kelly Coville, and legislator Damon Marr, who's around here somewhere. Okay, there he is, back there. I'd um, also like to thank the community leaders who were very involved in um, bringing this to my attention and to working with me on this. We have Anne Heakin and Gonzalo Cruz from the Don Bosco Worker Center, and Anne will be speaking to us later, as well as Professor Jason Park Parkin from the Pace Law School. Um, in addition, of course, I'd like to thank all of the workers who've joined us here this afternoon. And we probably have more, except that this is when usually the workers are working. We want you to know, of course, that the Board of Legislators is looking out for you and for homeowners and for everyone in the home improvement business trying to do the right thing and to play by a fair set of rules. The measure we're introducing today is an amendment to the home improvement business law in Westchester County the licensing law. These changes will make it easier for the county's Department of Consumer Protection to hold people accountable if they've exploited their workers either by underpaying them or by not paying them at all. Imagine putting in a full day's work or a week's work and not getting paid for it. For many of us, it's unthinkable. How could an employer be so unscrupulous or we be so vulnerable? But sadly, in Westchester County, as in other parts of the state, this is not an uncommon situation. The New York State Department of Labor currently has a process for filing complaints and the recovery of wages in these situations. And it works. According to the department in 2014, which is the last year that data is available, $30 million in recovered wages was dispersed to 27,000 workers in New York State. Unfortunately, it is a long and slow process. Our proposed legislation will require an applicant for a home improvement license here in Westchester to disclose any business-related judgments against them, particularly those involving non-payment or underpayment. These judgments will be taken into account when looking at contractors' new applications and renewals. The legislation also initiates a process here in Westchester for filing complaints concerning underpayment or non-payment, so local workers who feel they have been exploited can seek help here in Westchester. In addition, the proposed legislation has new protections for consumers who are hiring contractors requiring disclosure about proposed work in writing. This legislation does protect workers. It also protects consumers and it protects fair and honest business people by giving them a level playing field to compete on. I look forward to getting this legislation through the committee process and up for a vote on the floor of our legislative chambers so we can make these vital protections a reality. And now I would like to reintroduce the chairman of the board, Ben May Boykin, who has a few words to say. Thank you, uh, Legislator Barr, and the
the other sponsor of this deal, uh, Legislator Christopher Johnson. Um, this is an important piece of legislation. It makes Westchester County a more fair and more safe place to work. The proposed changes to the county's process for licensing home improvement contractors will help us in the exploitation of workers. Protecting workers is something that we all can agree on. No one should be hired to work, only to find themselves vandalized by being underpaid or not paid at all. This legislation will ensure that before issuing license, the county considers judgments against those who have been found to have not properly paid their workers. This does more than just protect workers. It, we, we, uh, it weeds out unscrupulous businesses people that protects the county's many honest workers and hardworking contractors ensuring that they can compete on a fair and equitable ground. Finally, this measure includes new protections for consumers, which details requirements for written agreements between them and their contractors. This no-nonsense piece of legislation protects our workers and makes Westchester a better place for all workers. And we're introducing this bill on the day that we had our Hispanic Heritage Celebration. So we're here to protect all workers in this county, and I'm very proud to be a co-sponsor of this very important piece of legislation. And we look forward to moving it very fast through our legislative process to the board chambers for approval and to, to the county executive for approval. So thank you very much. Now I'd like to introduce my colleague and co-sponsor, Legislator Chris Johnson. Good afternoon. First, I would like to thank Legislator Nancy Barr, who saw a need in this county and jumped right in and decided to do something about it. Um, I'd like to also thank and congratulate all of my colleagues who are co-sponsors on this bill as they've recognized that this is an important conversation to have for the people of Westchester to make sure that this happens. Um, I also want to highlight the fact that this board has taken uh, a priority of looking at how we practice business in Westchester. Um, and looking at this from a business perspective um, is important. Because when you go, when you open your business, when you have a landscaping practice, um, you want to make sure that when you're paying a fair wage, that your competitors are paying a fair wage as well. That you are competing on a fair level, um, and that everyone is above board and things are going well. So from a business perspective, this is absolutely making sure that we are all uh, playing the same game by the same rules. Um, otherwise, this is very simple. You go to work, you get paid. Uh, this is something that we teach children um, as young as five years old, right? We make a promise, you take out the garbage, you wash your dishes, you clean up the table, I'll give you a dollar, I'll give you a quarter. Um, and children know, uh, I didn't get my quarter, I didn't get my dollar. <laughs> so when you're an adult um, and you make a promise to someone who is doing work on a project that you deem important, they should receive compensation, the compensation that was promised to them. So it's that simple. When you work, you get paid. And that's what this is for. This is making sure that we uh, protect businesses on an equal playing field and that we protect employees, making sure that they get uh, what, is, what they've earned, what they've earned, what they've gone to work uh, and uh, you know, worked hard for. So once again, I want to thank uh, all the co-sponsors, but especially uh, Legislator Nancy Barr for stepping up in, in this time. Thank you. And now I'd like to introduce somebody who, uh, without whom this would not have been possible. She is the Executive Director of the Don Bosco Community Center in Port Chester, and her name is Ann Heaton. Uh, thank you to all the 
legislators who are here today. It's, um, I think I speak for all of the Alianza members uh, when I say that it is um, an overwhelming experience uh, to come here this morning uh, and to see this type of outpouring of support uh, for an issue that for far too long has remained in the shadows uh, in this wonderful uh, county that we are uh, blessed to uh, make our lives in. Uh, I want to uh, greet you on behalf of the Don Bosco workers uh, who are also members of this wonderful group here today in front of you, the Labor Alliance of Westchester. I'd like to commend Legislative Barr for sponsoring this bill uh, and for the many other county legislators who have already signed on and it sounds like will sign on. Changes to Westchester County Home Improvement Licensing Laws. That's the title of the bill. What I want to underscore is that this bill is pro-worker and pro-Westchester. That's because the only one benefiting from wage theft is the bad contractor. Wage theft hurts everyone else in the county. And here's some examples. Certainly it hurts workers and their families. Uh, unable, whether or not being paid for the week or the day or the month, however it goes, unable to meet basic needs. We run at Don Bosco Community Center a very large soup kitchen and food pantry every day of the week. And I will tell you that we have many workers and their families at those tables as a result of not being paid their wages, either mom or dad or both. So there are our number one priority to make sure that if you're willing to do a good day's work, a good week's work, that you earn the pay that you're entitled to and that you can help keep your family intact uh, and living with dignity. Number two, it hurts local communities with less local spending because workers have less money to spend. Research has shown that local workers spend their money on the local avenue. They're not jumping on Metro North to go spend it in New York City. And so our local businesses are also impoverished when that income is denied them. As mentioned, wage that hurts the good contractor, and they're out there. We know plenty of them, just not all of them are good contractors. Uh, and of course, they're outbid for jobs, uh, and they suffer at the hands of the uh, bad actor as well. And then finally, something that I think uh, many of us don't consider when we think about the problem of wage theft uh, in the home improvement sector is that it hurts homeowners who are charged for worker labor as part of an overall bill for the job uh, and never knows whether in fact uh, that fee goes to the worker or perhaps is pocketed by the contractor instead. So today, Westchester County joins a dozen or so very progressive communities throughout the country that have taken the same step up and step forward when it comes to enacting laws that will take an ethical position on wage theft and use local power to put the brakes on the bad actors, hold them accountable, including the denial or the revocation of their business license. And of course, that's going to open up a lot of opportunity for the good contractors to flourish. And that's who we want to see uh, growing and gaining in our county. The last comment, and it only comes from listening to all these wonderful people uh, behind me this morning, is that we can't ever forget that at the end of the day, that this legislation is about money, is about making sure that people are paid for uh, their, the work that they perform. But even at an even deeper level, this is about recognizing the dignity of every person in our county. All right, this is a justice issue. This is what we stand for to the world once we pass this legislation, along with a lot of other good justice legislation that I know is in development. So this is the county that we want to become, right? A just county, a progressive county when it comes to fighting for all people. And it is something that I am proud to be a member of. I'm proud to be a resident in this county for 20 years. And I know that more people in other counties will take a look at this project and the results of it and will find uh, very 
very pleasantly uh, that there'll be a lot of other copycats out there. Thank you very much. Thank you, Anne, those were wonderful, inspiring remarks. And finally, we have Professor Jason Parkin. He is a professor at a law school. He runs a clinic um, for uh, neighborhood justice, and he actually has a couple of his students here with him. But he has had students working on this uh, project from the beginning. So uh, thank you, Professor Parkin. Thank you, Legislator Barr, and um, thank you to all of the other legislators who are here today showing your support for this bill. Um, and uh, thanks as well to, um, to, to all of you for coming to, to learn more about the bill today. Um, as Legislator Barr said, my name is Jason Parkin, I'm a professor at Pace Law School, where I run the Neighborhood Justice Clinic. And the clinic um, involves law students working with me to provide legal support and advice to community groups like the Westchester Labor Alliance that are fighting for justice in Westchester County. Um, we're here to today talking about wage theft, and I just want to um, talk about that a little bit in general because I think it's important. <coughs> wage theft is a serious and growing problem in Westchester County. Um, wage theft occurs any time a worker is not paid what he or she has earned. The law is very clear on this. There is New York State and federal law that uh, makes it unlawful not to pay uh, your workers and gives workers a right to go and enforce their right to wages. They can go to court. They can file a claim with the state or the federal Department of Labor. Unfortunately, that process can be long, as you've heard. It can be hard. It can be scary to do if you've never been to court. And employers in the county know that and they know that they can get away with wage theft. And even if they're caught, they know that oftentimes they can still get away with it because it can be very hard to track them down or to try to force them to pay. And so that is the problem that the Westchester Labor Alliance sees every single day. And that is the reason why, even though we have strong laws on the state and federal works, wage theft still is a serious and growing problem. And so my clinic at the law school has been working with the Alliance for the past few years to think about ways to fight back and ways to protect workers and reduce wage theft in Westchester County. And we're here today talking about a bill that is exactly that kind of opportunity. And that's because the county is the only one that runs and operates the home improvement licensing process. It's part of county law and the Board of Legislators decides what makes a business eligible for a license. And these are businesses that this license covers um, everything at private residences from gardening and landscaping to fixing doors and windows and swimming pools, the kind of work that gets done day in and day out where we know that wage theft is a problem. And so my clinic has been working with the Labor Alliance for the past few years to try to think about how the county can stand up for workers and reduce wage theft. And the bill today does exactly that. It makes sure, it makes it very clear that if you are a business seeking a license in this county for home improvement work, and you have a history of wage theft, you should not be eligible for that license. And it also makes it very clear that if you're applying for a license, you have to turn over to the county any evidence of past wage theft, any times you've been caught before, so that the county knows when it makes that decision. And it also makes clear that any person in the county can file a complaint any worker here today, any of the advocates who work on these issues day in and day out, any homeowner that hears about wage theft that has happened can notify the county and that the county will take that under consideration when it then reviews the license application at the beginning or every two years when that license has to be renewed. And as Anne said, this kind of licensing reform is growing. Um, it is popping up all around the country in cities and counties that want to stand up for workers and stand up for law-abiding businesses. It's happening in big cities like San Francisco and Chicago and Seattle. And it's happening in smaller localities like New Brunswick, New Jersey and Princeton, New Jersey and Somerville, Massachusetts. Every year the number of roads and, um, and it's exciting that Westchester can join that list and provide a model for other parts of the country and other parts of New York State that are thinking about reforming their licensing processes to protect workers. And so 
um, on behalf of the clinic at Pace Law School and all the students who have been working to support the Westchester Labor Alliance. I'm proud to stand here today to, uh, to support the Alliance and to support this bill and to call upon the Board of Legislators, those here today and those who we hope we will see at the committee process and at the public hearing, to call on them to stand with the workers of Westchester County and to send a clear message that businesses that steal from their workers are not welcome in Westchester and to join the growing number of cities and towns around the country that have been changing their licensing laws to protect workers, to protect homeowners, to protect law-abiding businesses and to make it clear that that county seal of approval that business license issued by the county means something and that everyone in the county can trust that a business that has that license follows the rules, treats its workers well, and is the kind of business we'd all be proud to license. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, that concludes our prepared remarks, but if anybody has any questions about the bill, happy to uh, answer them if we can. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.